I got a new beanie. If you guys are a fan of horror and horror books, if you haven't had a chance to check out Typical Books on YouTube, you should. That's why I got this hat. It's a good looking hat. Can you see the worms? There they are. I was very excited for this beanie. As you may have noticed, I wear beanies a lot in my videos. I feel like I need one for every occasion and I did not have a bookish one. So now I do. And without further ado, we are going to talk about all the books that I read for the month of March. I read 12 books and one magazine. So I read 13 things and the magazine I read well, was a horror magazine and it was about 100 pages. So it was almost a book, but we will get to that. So the first book I read this month was What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. And oh man, what a thriller. It's the story of these three girls who were lifelong friends. One summer when they're like 11 years old, a tragedy strikes and the one girl is stabbed. She was stabbed like 17 times and she lives. There's a whole bunch of weird stuff. They found something weird out there. And then the guy who stabbed her and they put away in jail, like she never actually saw him. So she wasn't really sure if they had put the right person in jail. And all this has been like in the back of her mind for years and years. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And I really like this one. This was a book of the month book, another one that was awesome. So if you like thrillers and are looking for just a fast paced, weird, twisty one, this one was pretty great. I like weird stories that take place in the forest. Another book that had creepy crap, creepy crap, creepy stuff happening in the woods is a book by Darcy Coates called Haunted, which I thought was awesome. The next thing I read was Autobiography, which was, as it sounds, an autobiography by Tony Muggs, who is a stroke survivor and musician. He had a stroke at a really young age, at 28, and just how he overcame it through basically the support of his friends and his family and sheer determination and love of music. It's such a touching and inspiring story and it has an album that goes along with it like he has several bands he has like four bands he's in i know him from the band the mugs which is a detroit band that i've actually seen several times but the album that comes with this book is by his band dude it's pretty fantastic the book is awesome there's like a ton of photos in it and just a really great story i don't read a ton of biographies but when i do a lot of times they are for musicians it's just what i like so then we're gonna get into some of the stuff i read that is from the week of weird and i will also link my week of weird wrap up too that may go in a little more in depth on some of the next like four books i'm going to talk about because i already talked about them in depth in this other video so the first one is the sasquatch <laughs> Every time I try to say this, the Sasquatch Seekers Field Manual. Those two S's, those two S words in a row, throw me off. The Sasquatch Seekers Field Manual by David G. Gordon. This is a nonfiction book about what you need when going out to look for Sasquatch in the woods. And it also has stories and accounts from back in the day up to present time of people who have seen or encountered a Bigfoot type creature. It was fun to read and it was easy to read and it had like a lot of like good tips and tricks and different spots you can go to to possibly seek out a Bigfoot. But good luck because he's been winning at hide and go seek since forever. So you don't find Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Bigfoot finds you. And then next I read The King in Yellow by Robert Chambers and this is a book that was written in like 1896. It's 10 short stories and the first four stories refer to this play called The King in Yellow that slowly makes people go crazy or mad. And they're all like these weird kind of supernatural stories and some were really good that I enjoyed a lot. Some were, was a couple that I thought were kind of boring. It was kind of around a three star read for me but I think a lot of that is just it's a really old book and some of it just didn't translate into current times, at least for me. And then I also read The X-Files Archives, Volume 1, and I stumbled upon this book. I saw it at my library. It was on like their for sale shelf and I picked it up for like 50 cents. There's two stories in it called The Runes and Whirlwind. It's basically two of the episodes that were in The X-Files and it's in written form. So it was just cool to return to that world, see it in a bit more detail and to imagine it in, in my mind as I read that book and it was pretty great. And then the next one I read during Week Weird was The Hideous Book of Hidden Horrors. And this is various authors, also another short story compilation that has stories by Andy Davidson, Josh Mellerman, Haley Piper, Cynthia Paleo, and so many more different authors. And there's some really, really fantastic stories in there. It's funny because I put off reading this book for so long. I bought it like a year ago. 
And I remember I took it camping. I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna read this while we're camping. But we were all over the place and I was taking photos and we were hiking in the woods and going swimming in the lake. And so I just never got to it. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna read this. But then like, you know, if you're a booktuber, stuff just happens where you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna do this readathon or I have a review to do for this book or it's this month. So we're doing weird books of this or that. And so it finally fit into where I could read it in the week of weird. <laughs> And then I read another thriller. It was another book of the month, The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And this is what happens when a writing retreat goes sideways, upside down, in an isolated location. Nobody gets out, nobody gets in. All these people thought they were gonna have a nice, lovely writing retreat. <laughs> And then they get there, they find out, nah, you're gonna have to write 3,000 words a day. Y'all are gonna pump out books, and by the end of this, you're gonna have a novel. And to make it spicy, whoever's is the best is gonna win a book deal, go on a book tour with Rosa Valla, who's like this amazing, renowned author. Stuff gets real weird. This creepy estate that they're on is old and creepy, it's got a weird history. Maybe it's haunted. People are very suspicious. Stuff is shady and then someone goes missing when there's a blizzard and it all goes to hell. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was fast paced, didn't take itself too seriously. It was a good thriller. Then I read Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. This book was great, but it is a slow burn. And if you're not a fan of slow burns and stories that kind of like slowly go along, I can't recommend it, but I loved it. It had a great story. It was weird. It was cultish. And it's about trying to outrun fate and the things that this guy had to do. Like there's this guy, Juan, and he was a medium and he calls on this thing called the darkness that these weird cult people worship. They kind of like found him as a kid and, and raised him and then I guess kind of used him for their purposes. These people are totally deranged and messed up and it's about him trying to save his son from having to deal with the same crap that he had to deal with and what he had to do and go through and try to outrun that fate. And it breaks it into different sections of the book. I mean, it's a big book, it's like 600 pages. And so you get Juan's story, the median, and then you get his wife, Rosario's story, and then his son, Gasper, and then some of the other like minor players in the book. If you do like a slow burn, I would highly recommend it. But if you don't like a slow burn, it's gonna be too slow and maybe not as enjoyable for you. So then I read another weird one called Terraforming by P.A. Shepard or Paul Shepard. And this book, <laughs> if you see the review for it, I say Star Wars in the miniverse like a hundred times. No, like three times. But it was like Star Wars in the miniverse. <laughs> There is this doctor, she's been working on perfecting the transfers of her consciousness and to transfer it to these like little nano devices that can enter the human body and you know, get in there and like diagnose what's wrong. She gets to the point where it's kind of like, I guess, perfected and her and her counterpart, this other doctor, 37C, are gonna go inside this person to see what's wrong. There's something wrong in their head. And so they get in there and they discover this whole freaking world and galaxies and universe. And it explains it like somehow like outside of time and space, like how it could exist there. And it's super weird. There's bounty hunters and cartels and it's like Star Wars in the miniverse. And I really enjoyed it. It's a novella. It was super fast paced and there are sapphic heroes in it. It was pretty great. Then I read the book Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And this is a book that stars an octopus named Marcellus, a woman named Tova, another guy named Cameron. And Tova is an older woman. She works at this aquarium and she ends up befriending this octopus and they end up having this strange friendship. Her husband had recently passed away and she lost her son when he was 18. He disappeared. There was maybe an accident. They never found the body. And so she's had this big tragedy in her life. And this other guy, who's another main character, Cameron, uh, his mom abandoned him when he was nine. So he grew up with his aunt, never knew his father. And so he is trying to like find his father and he goes on a trip and he ends up stopping in this town and ends up working at the aquarium too, where Tova works. And it's like how their lives intercept and like where their stories go. And it was such a heartfelt, emotional, sad, beautiful story. And I really, really liked it. Then I read this book, Lungfish, by Megan Gillis. It's very poetic and dark the way it's written. Every page is like dark poetry. It's a story of this woman and her daughter and her husband who is this addict. The sadness of the relationship, watching 
how an addict acts, how she tries to help him, but you can't fix something that's so broken, you know, you're trying to bail out the water and bail out the water and just more holes just keep appearing and the cracks and like how she overcomes this and eventually rises up to escape the situation. And it was sad, but beautiful. And I really like, I enjoyed the flow of it. It wasn't like reading a regular narrative though, because of how poetic it was. But I enjoyed that most about it, I think. Really, really touching and emotional and great story. And then I read The United States of Cryptids by J.W. Ocker. Cause I love me some cryptids. My favorite one is Mothman. This one though was really great. I've read several books on cryptids. A lot of times, you know, it's the same ones in most books. This one had a lot that I'd never heard of and ones with really weird names like Snallygaster and Zort Slobbers. That's not one. <laughs> Snarly Yows, Glowacus, that's the one I call Zach Galifianakis, and the Wampa Hoopus. I had never heard of any of these. There's a lot of strange ones, and it's broken up into you have like the Midwest ones, and you have Northeast down south and then out west coast way it breaks down like where each of the cryptids have been seen and then it also he put in this book which i thought was cool is like the different festivals that happen that are cryptid festivals and different like statues and museums and stuff in each state which i thought was cool that that was also included like if you ever wanted to do like a u.s cryptid museum visit statues and landmarks road trip you could probably map out some stuff with this book and I thought that was pretty dang cool. And then I read a horror magazine. It's a brand new magazine put out by Mike Salinas and I will link the magazine down below. It's darkdeadthings.com I believe, but I'll have that link down below as well as the Instagram. And it had two poems and it had eight different stories. The only author I knew in it was Chandler Morrison and Chandler Morrison's story was awesome. It was absolutely fantastic. Like the stories and the poems in it were awesome. I really enjoyed reading it. It was about 100 pages. The quality of writing was awesome. It had sci-fi horror and there was ghosts and there was blobby horror and there was just horror of being a prom queen and the actual stuff that goes on in the prom queen's mind and such. Just stuff like that and it was a nice variety and I really liked the cover art too and also the illustrations too that were in the magazine were cool as well. And if you're interested in any of these books I will have links down below to those. Some of those are affiliate links so it's a great way to support the channel and it also goes to support indie bookstores. So if you are a fan of videos where I talk about multiple books that I have read the next video coming up will be another one about multiple books that I have read. So stick around check it out and if you had fun hanging out today Hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.